The ability to remember is not given to each and every one of us, much as we have memories. I don't think I need to belabor this point. Because I think in Uganda we know it only too well. We, are very, we have a very short memory. We are not short-sighted. We just have a short memory. And we forget very easily where we have come from. We forget very easily what God has taken us from. We forget very easily the troubles that we have faced individually, as a district, as a nation, together. We forget very easily. I grew up in trouble. That's all I ever knew in my life. In this place. That's all I ever knew. How can I forget? Memory is an essential element for a thankful heart. When we cease to remember, then we cease to be thankful. There are also many times in my own life when I have seen that there is a, a bigger power than the human power that shepherds the, the human cause course of human events. Welcome back to Wandpedia, your one-stop center for Uganda's history and the rest of the world. The name is Tony Geoffrey Owana, and as usual, Abad Semiano is right behind there. Um, we are continuing with our series of the celebrations of uh, Yoweri William Seveni's victory in the first presidential election in Uganda held on 12th May 1996. In the first one you saw uh, preaching and a kasuida by a young man. Those of you who have missed it, just click backwards. It is still intact. Now in this one, uh, we see Reverend uh, Reverend John Senyonyi making a very, very powerful sermon, which was followed by other sermons. If you look very, very carefully, you will notice very, very historic people in this video. Some are dead, but many are alive. Watch out for Right Honorable Speaker Rebecca Kadag when she was a, a real babe. You watch out for Vice President Kazibwe and many, many others of our leaders. But I'll not keep you waiting. Please, let's get back to 26th May, 1996, in Luero. And this special thanks goes to James Emmanuel Sirwada Magambo and the Presidential Press Unit, which captured this momentous occasion. I count myself to be most honored the sermon of the day on that occasion was uh, delivered by Reverend Senyonyi. Following your election into the high office of the President of the Republic of Uganda. Well, I must also say that this is very historic, that a president is elected into office, and then the first thing that he thinks of is to have a Thanksgiving service. And so that is very special indeed. Because it's very easy at the end of an election to consider only one thing, to thank oneself and those that have ferried you into the high office. But I think behind it all, as we read in the scriptures, there is the purpose of God. And for that reason, I believe that it is only proper that you should thank God. And so to express this gratitude in this way, and especially with us, the people of Ruero, is to me a very historic event. I want just very quickly to reflect on the first text that was read for us from Isaiah chapter 12, which is an expression of gratitude as Isaiah was speaking. And I'll take only a very few minutes to reflect on it, but you'll permit me to reread that text that we may refresh our memories as I share on it. It says, and I will start from the very first verse, In that day, you will say, I will praise you, O Lord. Although you were angry with me, your anger has turned away, and you have comforted me. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. 
The Lord, the Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. In that day you will say, Give thanks to the Lord. Call on his name. Make known among the nations what he has done. And proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing to the Lord for he has done glorious things. Let this be known to all the world. Shout aloud and sing for joy. And here it says, people of Zion, and I think more appropriately I would say, people of Uganda. For great is the Holy One of Uganda among you. That is the text on which I want to reflect very briefly this afternoon. It's needful that in this country we have something like a Thanksgiving Day. It's needful that we take some time on one day in a year when we can stop, reflect on that which God has done for us and say, thank you, Lord, for what you have done for us. It's necessary that we learn to say that. Let me just say three things that I do see in this text as very crucial, three essential elements of a thankful heart. Three. The first one is a memory. The ability to remember is not given to each and every one of us, much as we have memories. I don't think I need to belabor this point. Because I think in Uganda we know it only too well. We, are very, we have a very short memory. We are not short-sighted. We just have a short memory. And we forget very easily where we have come from. We forget very easily what God has taken us from. We forget very easily the troubles that we have faced individually, as a district, as a nation, together. We forget very easily. The writer Isaiah here says, I'll praise you. He remembers the anger that God had shown him in years past. And he says, Lord, you have remembered me. You've turned to me. You've turned away from the anger that you had at first. He remembered. He had a memory. Brothers and sisters, let us use our memories to remember where God has taken us from. Because having no memory is one of the best things that we cherish in this country. And that is sad. You can never be thankful to God unless you remember where you have come from. You can never be thankful to God unless you remember what God has led you through. You can never be thankful for the food that is at the table unless you remember where that food came from. You need a memory to be thankful to God. And that's why he says, you were angry with me, but you turned from your anger. I remember that. I went through a hard time. And each one of us can think back and can remember where God has led us from. Maybe in your individual life alone. Maybe as a district, this place was termed the Luero Triangle. How can we forget what we've gone through? I grew up in trouble. That's all I ever knew in my life. In this place. That's all I ever knew. How can I forget? Memory is an essential element for a thankful heart. When we cease to remember, then we cease to be thankful. It's impossible for us to thank God unless we remember. Second thing, you need an object of gratitude. Someone to thank. I don't know how you can sit back and start thanking yourself. You know, very often, it's very easy for us to think that it is my hand that has led me, that has given me the victory that I have. That's why I think it's a very special thing that His Excellency the President and the First Lady have said, no, we know where our victory came from. Because power never comes from man. We cast our votes. Yes, that's true. But even votes can go the wrong way. At the time of voting, I was out of the country. And I tell you, in my heart, I felt I had to do something about this voting. And I talked to my bosses, and they were very good. 
They flew me back into Uganda, I voted, and then I went back. <laughs> That's how it must be. Now, I didn't have the money to fly back into Uganda. I didn't have the money to fly back into this country to vote and then go back. At a moment like that, that's when I say, thank you, God, that I was able to exercise my right as a citizen of this country. There must be an object of your gratitude. It's God that is to be thanked. And so Isaiah, as he looks at it, he says in verse 2, surely God is my salvation. That's why he, he breaks out in praise in verse 4, and he says, give thanks, not to myself. Not to those, your excellency, who have voted you in. Yes, there is an opportunity for us to say thank you to them. I think it is appropriate. But first and foremost, to God. It's him that we have to thank and say, give thanks to the Lord. Call on his name. Make known among the nations what he has done in carrying out a peaceful election in Uganda. There must be an object of that gratitude. When gratitude becomes egocentric, it ceases to be a channel of joy to our hearts. There must be an object for that gratitude. And that, I propose, is God himself that we have to say, thank you, Lord, for leading us through the elections. And thirdly, he says in verse 2, Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. We have looked at the past in the memory. We have looked at the present as the one that we had thank. And he says, when I look into the future, I will trust. That's what he says. I will trust. That we have to trust God for what he has done in the past tells us that we can depend on him in the future. That there is hope in this country. You see, we cannot just stop at the level of saying thank you, thank you, thank you. But that's when the gratitude that we express to God gives birth to trust and prayer. Reverend Senyonyi's lengthy sermon was followed by Hajat Janeti Mukwaya's reading from the Holy Quran. Hajat Mukwaya is the Minister of State in charge of World Triangle Affairs. In English, the originator or creation or Malaika, the second reading will come from the Surat Yasin. Audhu Billahi Mina Shaitan Rajim, Bismillahir Rahman Rahim. Praise be to Allah, what Allah out of his mercy bestows on mankind, none can withhold. What he does with, withhold, none can grant apart from him. And he's the exalted in power, full of wisdom. Verily, when he intends a thing, his command is be and it is. So glory to him in whose hands is the dominion of all, and to him will he all be brought back. Amen. Oluwaba bata tege deru zungu, ngambi ebu enti. Nti katonda guwaya gade guwawa. Nti katonda guwaya gade echi intu, agama ntichive nechiva. Alhamdulillah. May I... May I, Your Excellency, take this occasion to invite you, Your Excellency, the First Lady, and all the invited guests to stand for this last song where we shall all join together and praise the Lord for all that he has given. May I ask the police band, please, to lead us.
déjà. Tu vois que le pasteur dit, Dieu est nous servant to lead the closing prayer. I ask all of you to just bow down your heads and let's pray the final prayer. Our Heavenly Father, our friend and God, today we have come together in this place on behalf of all people of the nation of Uganda to thank you and to publicly acknowledge your kindness and your love to us as a people. Our Father, we have so much to thank you for that we tend to take for granted. Like, for example, our beautiful country, the blessing of abundant rain, the sunshine, the fertile land, and life itself. We thank you, Lord, for these things and all other things we may not be able to name one by one. On this occasion, however, we want to thank you in particular for the total transformation of our country, Uganda, from a country traumatized and forgotten to now a beautiful, stable, and hopeful country with a visibly bright future. We thank you, Lord, our Father, for being a caring and listening God. For indeed, you have listened to many of our people's prayers, and you have answered them with kindness. We thank you, Lord, for opening the eyes of our people and showing them their need for each other and using them to transform their own country by defending their unity, their freedom, their peace, without forgetting that it had come expensively through their own bloodshed. You are the only one, Lord, who has the power to change the hearts of your people. And we are here today to thank you with all our hearts for that change which has brought the unity of heart and purpose that is now evident in our country. We pray now to you, our Lord and Father, that you continue to look with kindness and love on the rest of the people of Uganda and continue to strengthen us by teaching all our people to love each other and to respect human life so that even those who still live under hardship and fear can come to know peace and happiness, thereby bringing total freedom and brotherhood in the whole of our country in order for us to work together for the promotion of good for all those coming generations of Ugandans. Remind us, Father, always how we are created in your image and that we are charged to do those things that bring glory to your name. Give us, therefore, the wisdom to tell always the right from the wrong, and also give us the inner strength to strive to do what is right. We pray for our leaders, Lord, that they may lead this nation to work even harder and strive to rid us of poverty and want. Show us a way to build our nation into an able society, able to take care of its own people, and to utilize the great resources of this land to the service of its people. We cannot fail to thank you, Lord, for the many friends of Uganda that have been supportive and helpful over the many years of our struggle. And even now we pray, Heavenly Father, that you bless them and uphold them, and uphold our intent to accept them all as brothers and sisters, regardless of color and creed, so that we can in this country continue to grow into one big family 
with you as our Father, through the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. President of the Republic of Uganda, Kanguta Yoweri yeah. Museven and Mama Janet Museven, all the distinguished guests, I would like Your Excellency on behalf of all the invite, invited guests and also on behalf of the people of Luero who have co-hosted us with you to thank you very, very much. First of all, for the wonderful meal, because where we are sitting here in Uganda, they say, Uganda kulia, Urugende njala teruda. So I want on their behalf to thank you very much for the wonderful meal you have given us. But turning back to the reason why we are here, I would like to thank you and remembering the words of Reverend Senyonyi for thanking God. But I want to say that since we are all human beings, it is sometimes difficult to thank that person whom you have not seen. And in Madame's prayer, Madame Janet reminded us that we are all made in the image of God. So we can only thank God by thanking you, which God puts his hand upon you to, to liberate this country from the years of turmoil and to lead us exactly where we are. And on that word, the Ugandans do remember, they remembered correctly and they'll continue to remember. But they don't remember because we don't see what is in their brains. Let us also pray to the Lord that God gives them that vision, does some surgery to their brains so that he puts a memory center there and they join us in the good memory of thinking ahead and planning for our country. Your Excellency, with those few words, I would like to invite you to address your guests and the people of Luero District. Thank you very much. First of all, I would like to thank God for having guided this country through successful general elections. Some of us are not very actively involved in uh, church matters. <laughs> However, this is not to say that we don't know God or that we do not communicate with him. We do so. In fact, at one time I was very active myself in the 60s. But later on I changed and I, I communicate with God through a quieter way than I used to do in the 60s. <laughs> but there is no doubt that many of us acknowledge the supreme being who made all these complicated systems in the universe, and that is God. There are also many times in my own life when I have seen that there is a, a bigger power than the human power that shepherds the human course, course of human events. It is therefore fitting that we have met here today, all of us, to give praise to God. At one time, some of the people were worried that the elections may be mismanaged by the politicians and result into chaos. For me, I don't believe that somebody can cause real chaos in Uganda and get away with it now. I think we are beyond that. But they could complicate things. They could complicate things. They could cause, because we still have very many negative people like you saw during this campaign, people are talking rubbish. 
so it was possible for the politics to be a bit complicated. But I think still would have solved the problem in the end with a little bit of shaking here and doing a few things. <laughs> so I think what really we must thank God for is that he has solved the political question of Uganda in the simplest, least complicated way. Maybe later I will talk about what complication that could have arisen. But for now, let me join others who have thanked God for solving the political question of Uganda in this simple, straightforward, and coherent manner, the way he has done it. Secondly, I would like to thank all of you, the different teams from the districts and from the zones and the National Task Force and the Advisory Committee for the commendable work you did. I thank you very much. <laughs> I was also doing my own kakuyege to supplement your own work. <laughs> so those ones with whom I worked who are not part of the formal teams which were set up, I also thank. I would also like to thank the voters. The voters who gave us 75.5% of the vote cast. This was a clear message to all forces within and outside Uganda, that the people of Uganda are together and nothing would divide them. I therefore salute the voters for resisting, because this was really a new resistance movement. The, the no change movement, the no change movement was a new resistance movement against the deception, because there was a a new, a new problem, deception, lies and deception and, and the sectarianism, you know, people trying to revise sectarianism. Uh, then there was this resistance movement, no change, no change, children, no change, all. Uh. So I congratulate all the members of this massive resistance movement. Because the 4.8 million votes which were counted in the box, do not include the, the children, the, the ones who could not vote, but who are part of the movement. <laughs> so, it was a massive resistance movement. I congratulate all of you for this massive movement against deception, against sectarianism, against foreign interference, against all forms of evil. Aha! Uh -huh. Wanapidia does not want to keep you waiting for more. You are getting ready for the next part, and you can only be able to enjoy this if you keep COVID at bay. And in Uganda, the way to keep COVID at bay is to stay inside your weary's ark as you wait for the dove to bring back the message that the waters of the flood have finally subsided. Get ready for part three of this momentous occasion only at Owanapidia. <laughs>